Hey everyone, so today I wanted to do a little tutorial on how to upload and edit a photo for your um, Illinois medical cannabis card. Um, with alternative to opiates being set up, um, IEPH is telling us by the 31st, fingers crossed. Um, and with applications moving towards the electronic route, everything's being done online now um, as opposed to by mail. I wanted to set up a little tutorial for the less technologically inclined so they can do this easily at home themselves. Um, as long as you own a computer and some sort of camera, um, digital camera or most phone cameras will work. Um, I wouldn't recommend using a, your phone camera if your phone is um, ancient. Um, if it, uh, older phones tend to have uh, lower quality cameras on them and you don't want to send um, IDPH a blurry um, photo. Um, but yeah, anyway, IDPH does have a few requirements for, their, uh, for your photo. Um, it has to be taken in the last 30 days. Um, so no old photos. It has to be taken against the white wall. Um, I did mine against my bedroom door. Um, it's just a plain white door, no grooves or anything that will cast a shadow, um, no extra color. Um, and, um, and the doorknob was obviously low enough where it wasn't in the photo. Um, no filters, um, obviously no Snapchat filters um, of any kind. Um, has to be a square photo. Um, it says two by two inches. Um, I'm not sure why they're still using inches since that's not exactly how it's measured on a computer. Um, but the main point is that um, you want a square photo. You don't want that rectangle rectangle photo that uh, cameras often take. Um, so it'll. And that's what mainly what I'm going to be showing you um, in a second, um, how to crop that and edit that. And then um, it has to be your full face. Um, I um, did keep my glasses on. Um, they didn't have an issue with that. Um, I did take my hat off, um, and I believe um, that is a requirement. Um, that being said, though, um, I do remember reading in new rules that um, uh, there is an exception for those undergoing chemo treatment that have um, suffered hair loss as a result. Um, there is an exception to wearing a hat or a headscarf in that case. Um, I believe that's the only exception. Um, it, they're possibly... A, I'm, I'm guessing there's a religious um, exemption as well. Um, I don't remember reading anything about that though. Um, so you may want to, if that's uh, if that's you, um, you may want to go a little more into that yourself. Regardless, um, a little disclaimer before I start. Um, this is a Windows PC. Um, this is not a Mac. Um, Max will be a little bit different. Um, ultimately, the process should be the same. Um, the program will look a little different, though. Um, but yeah, um, and again, before I start, um, I want everyone to take a look at my uh, background um, on my desktop, and I encourage you to sign up uh, for Witness Lips ASAP. You can do so by texting WITNESS to 63566, um, and that'll sign you up for texting service where anytime there is a witness slip available for um, legislation regarding cannabis in Illinois, um, you will get that texted to you um, with a link to that witness slip. It'll make it all very simple for you, um, and it will help uh, both legalize recreational cannabis and help uh, expand the medical program. Um, and if you're looking for more details on that as well, um, we have a Facebook group. Um, you can visit, I encourage you to visit that as well. 
um, that'll go into a little more detail into instructions on how to fill out a witness slip if you're unfamiliar um, and it will also um, explain a little why you should want to fill out a witness slip. Um, Alright, so let's go ahead and get started then. Um, so the first thing you want to do obviously is take your photo. Um, like I said, make sure it's um, in front of a plain white background. Um, I took a, f a few of them, so I had uh, choices later on um, to pick the one I was happiest with. Um, and once you've done that, um, you'll simply plug your device, whether it, uh, it's a digital camera or your phone, um, into your computer. Um, once you've done that, um, in certain cases, if this is the first time you've done that, um, it will often um, start um, downloading a driver, which you'll need in order to access your device on your computer. Um, you just wait for that to download, and once that's downloaded, then um, you should be able to see your device. Um, but in most cases, you've probably already plugged this device into your computer at one point, um, so that shouldn't be needed. Um, regardless, you want to go into your libraries, um, to the sidebar, um, where you have all your files and stuff, and you should see a removable disk of some sort. Um, in many cases, if your computer recognizes the device, it won't say removable disk, it will just say what the device is. So if it's an iPhone, it'll say iPhone, it'll say, if it's a camera, it'll say the model, like Sony and the model number of the camera or something like that. Um, but in this case, it doesn't recognize it. So it just says removable, removable disk. Um, you'll go into that. There's usually a couple folders you got to click into um, to get to your photos. Um, and then it should have a long list of all of your photos. The, uh, you want to find the photo that you were happy with, um, open that up, you're going to right click on that photo, and where it says open with, go ahead and click uh, on photos, um, this is a, right now I'm in Windows Photo Viewer, um, that's about all you can do with it, is view it. Program, it makes it a bit easier to edit and crop. Um, once you open that up, um, you're going to simply click on it. It will pop up this little menu on the bottom, and uh, you're going to want to click crop. Um, now, remember this has to be a square um, aspect ratio. Um, you don't want a rectangle, um, as you can see it's not exactly square, um, it's, uh, um, and it needs to be. Um, your photo will get rejected if it's not that one-to-one -one aspect ratio. Um, and in this program it makes it super simple. Um, you go down here where it says aspect ratio and you click square. And it will make your crop into a perfect square. After that, you're just going to move this around until you're happy with the coverage area. Um, remember, you want your full face. Um, in this case, like I said, I did it in front of my door. So as you can see in the photo, you can see the door hinge there. You do, and you can even see some color on the uh, right of that hinge. Um, you don't want that um, in your photo. Um, so make sure if uh, that exists in your photo, make sure it's cropped out. Um, and if you can't crop that out without cropping your face out, you need to take a new photo. Um, but once you're happy with that, and I think I'm happy with that coverage, You'll click Apply. It will uh, then show you your cropped photo. And you now have two options. You can either save a copy of this photo, um, 
that way you'll keep your original copy as well. Um, or you can update original, which it'll simply just wipe out that old copy and it'll replace it with uh, this photo. Um, I generally save a copy um, only because in the small, in the unlikely chance that they say, hey, your photo uh, isn't up to par, um, then I have that original copy, which I can just go back to and edit in a way that they're happy with. Um, but in most cases, it's probably because of the photo you took, so you probably have to start from scratch. Um, regardless, it doesn't really matter that much. But in this case, I'm going to save a copy. Um, and that will simply save it to the original folder you got the photo from, so your camera. Um, unless you, of course, move the photo to a different folder. Um, but once you've saved that copy, you can X out of this. And then, um, once you have, um, once you save that copy, it will come up as the same name your original file was under, but with a, uh, little number in, uh, parentheses next to it indicating the, uh, copy number. So, um, you want to click that, double check it's the right folder. And as you can see, it's the square cut picture. It's not that original one. This is the one you want to take to the side. And that's the one you want to upload into, uh, into the website, into your application. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, in most cases, um, it should automatically um, be a JPEG. Um, file format. Um, if for some reason um, yours is not, um, then uh, the simple way to get around that um, would be to open it up in a program that you can um, save it. Um, So, there, and there, yeah, there, you can right-click this to open with. There's also an option up here to open in a certain program. Um, and whenever I need to change the format of a photo, I like to open it up in my paint program because it's usually pretty easy to do it this way. Um, it'll bring up your photo, which um, you can, you don't have to be so zoomed into but um regardless you don't actually need to do anything with the photo you just need to go to the as option um, which you can then uh down here where it says save as type um you can change to um different formats so let's say it's a png um but you need it as a jpeg you can save it as a jpeg um, and this will save a, uh, in, in this case it's redundant because it's already a JPEG, but in this case it'll save a separate, if it's not, it'll save a separate file, um, and then you'll have your JPEG. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, after that you'll go into the website. Um, I have another video that goes through my process of going through that website, um, so you can see how you uh, would do that. Um, but yeah, I hope you found this helpful. And uh, one last reminder, don't forget to text WITNESS to 63566. Thanks, guys.